The following is an exclusive presentation of Optimum. We're your TV, phone, and internet company. Ossining, this community jewel on the banks of the Hudson River is experiencing an economic upswing. While well, the downtown area is being revitalized, the community is energized. Today, Meet the Leaders is coming to you from Ossining High School as the future of this vibrant community gets a chance to talk directly to their federal representative. That's coming up next. Welcome to Meet the Leaders, a special edition here from Austin High School. Another big round of applause. And we are thrilled to have participation in government students and from the U.S. government, Congresswoman Nita Lowy. Nita, so glad you're here today. Always Good a to pleasure see you again. to be here in this wonderful, great high school. And one of the great things about this program, and I think for the students I want to point out, uh, Congressman Lowy represents parts of the Lower Hudson Valley, and that's terrific in the House. But she's also a longtime member of the Appropriations Committee, which spends all those billions, right? And at the moment is also on the Committee of Congress members and senators trying to hammer out some kind of budget agreement. So you're right in the thick of things. And I, I want to ask my first question. We're going to hear from all the students, too, but I get the first question, right? And my first question is this. Uh, 2013 Congress one was a, was a brutal year when it comes to the Congress. Government shutdowns, worker furloughs, uh, a, a lot of discord in Washington. Uh, you're on the conference committee. Does 2014 look equally gloomy? Well, I would hope that the Republican members of the House of Representatives understand that this shutdown cost us about $24 billion in economic activity. That's jobs. People were furloughed from their jobs. Too many people in our communities can't go to the mall, can't do shopping. Their families really had a tremendous impact. So I would hope that wise heads would prevail in the Republican Party, because remember in the House, they are the majority, mm -hmm. and work with the Democrats in a bipartisan way to come up with a budget that creates jobs, strengthens the economy, serves everyone in our community. So I tend to be an optimist. And that's, I'm thrilled to hear that because you're right in the thick of things. Now, as we look at the, uh, the Congress getting together again in 2014, there are some key issues that uh, have just really concerned folks. One was the sequester, the across the board budget cuts. You know, instead of deciding we can fund this this year and fund that next year, we just did a percentage off the top for everyone. Is that likely to continue? Well, as many know, the way the budget is put together, the Senate came out with a number of a trillion fifty-eight, which was the president's request. The House came out with a number of nine sixty-seven billion dollars. That sounds like a lot of money, but the reason I support the higher money, the higher dollar amount of a trillion fifty-eight, is because I think it's important to continue to invest. <clears throat> excuse me, in the National Institutes of Health, which does research on cardiology, on autism, on Alzheimer's, on diabetes, on food allergies, a whole range of illnesses. And when you lay off people from the National Institutes of Health, it's the public that suffers. And that's the same for investing in transportation, investing in education, we have 12 appropriations bills. So I am hoping that the sequester can go away. And by the way, the chair of the committee in the House that works with me as the ranking, you may know that when the Democrats are in charge, I'm the chair. When the Republicans <laughs> are in charge, You're Hal Rogers, member, I'm yeah. the ranking member. Yep. And Chairman Hal Rogers and, and what we call them the 12 Cardinals, the head of each of the committees on appropriations, sent a letter to Paul Ryan, head of the Budget Committee, and they made it very clear that the sequester has to go away and we should be able to write these bills at a good number because we want to create jobs and strengthen the economy, and we've got to do it and do it now. Now, unfortunately, Thanksgiving's coming up. Happy Thanksgiving. 
and we're out of town. And then after Thanksgiving, there is the Christmas or Hanukkah holidays, although Hanukkah came early this Very year. Very early this year. <laughs> and so I don't know how we're going to get all this done by January 15th, but I think it's essential and it's in the interest of all of us, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, we should be working together in a bipartisan way. Excellent. We're going to be getting the questions from the students in a couple of minutes. What do you expect them to ask you? I don't know. Students are very creative. I would think they want to know about a strong economy because they're interested in getting a job, going to college, or maybe in reverse. Or well, some are taking jobs at the same time they're going to college because it's so hard to pay the bills. Sure. And they don't want to leave college uh, with the big number <laughs> to I pay worry, off. I worry Stop. about that. And I do believe that in a country like the United States of America, where we talk about the importance of education, in particular science, technology, education, STEM education, the mathematics is the M, that we have to do all we can to help every student get that education and not be up to here with all the college expenses. It's very, very tough for the majority of students here in this room. The other thing, uh, just a, a quick thought I'd like to hear you, because you and I have talked about this before, I have daughters. Uh, equal pay for women, is that going to oh, move forward at some point? Our we have theme a, is I see when, a lot of smiles already, so <laughs> go ahead. Our theme is when women succeed, America succeeds. When women succeed, America succeeds. So we're talking about equal pay for women. Why shouldn't they get equal pay? And it's still not equal. And we're talking about opportunities in a whole range of fields for women. So I have been a big advocate for investing in education for women. And by the way, I also am very involved in international education, as you know, because by educating the women, I do feel we can craft a better road for peace. Outstanding. What do you think of that, huh? Good idea? <laughs> Terrific. I, you, you can, you, Nita, you can feel the, uh, they're ready to go out there, right? The students yeah. have their questions. Let's do this. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll hear questions from our students here and Mike Tyner's participation in government class. Glad you're all here and glad you're with us on Optimum. Meet the Leaders continues right after this break. You can't text and pay attention to the world around you, and you definitely can't text and drive. Every year, deaths due to distracted and negligent driving are increasing. In fact, while drunk driving rates have dropped greatly, negligent driving fatalities have skyrocketed. Find out more at negligentdriving.com. Tools sure make our lives easy but a tool is only as useful as the hand that holds it. When it comes to straightening crooked teeth and misaligned jaws, orthodontists have all the right tools in their toolbox. They're the most skilled professionals to oversee your care. Orthodontists have the expertise that comes with two to three years of specialized education beyond dental school. They know best which instruments to use when correcting orthodontic problems. Put your smile in the right hands. Visit braces.org. Are you playing a dangerous game with the future of America's citrus? Move a citrus plant and you could be spreading a disease that kills citrus. On its own, the disease can't move far, but in a car, an infected plant can travel miles. Move a citrus plant and it could be game over for our citrus. Now it's your turn. Please don't risk citrus. Don't move citrus. Learn more at SaveOurCitrus.org. A message from the USDA. Meet the Leaders coming to you from Austin High School. We have a participation in government class. Mike Tyner is a teacher, and we are participating with government because we have Nita Lowy, Congresswoman, right here, ready to answer questions from the students in this class. This is a great idea, right? I'm ready. All right, let's get to our first question. What's your name? And fire away. My name's John 
Thomas Zoe, hello. Morning, John. So we know, you know, Thomas is some of the most polarized he's ever been, you know, with about 10% approval rating and lost most of his in the French uh, rating. So my question to you, Ms. Lowy, is how would you be willing to compromise with Republicans to pass a responsible and an affordable uh, budget? Well, that's a very good question, and I have always worked across the aisle in a bipartisan way, and I agree with you. Congress is more dysfunctional than I have ever seen it, and this is my 25th year in the Congress. It is outrageous that the Republicans shut down because they wouldn't accept their own number. So we already compromised at the current rate of spending. We're now in the conference committee. I'm honored to be appointed as one of three Democrats in the conference committee. The chair, the Republican chair of the Appropriations Committee could write all these bills in a couple of hours. And the Republican chair sent a message to Speaker Boehner and Paul Ryan, who is chair of the budget committee, and said we may have, we must have a budget now. Let's compromise, let's work together. So there is a number between a trillion fifty-eight and nine sixty-seven, and I do hope we can reach it soon because the shutdown cost us twenty-four billion dollars. Outrageous. So I'm gonna work hard for it and I hope we can. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. All right, let's keep going. And <coughs> next question. The Affordable Care Act, if implemented properly, could provide some very important changes that would make a difference. For example, for all of you, you could stay on your parents' plan until the age of 26. If, God forbid, some of your family or any friends you know have a serious condition, they couldn't be turned away, whether it's cancer or heart disease or diabetes, they couldn't be away and uh, turned away and charged more for health care. This is really important. If, in fact, your family reaches a height and the insurance company before the Affordable Care Act said, sorry, we can't pay more than that in expenses, Affordable Care Act, you can't do that. But I am furious that those who are implementing the Affordable Care Act couldn't get it right with the computer program. I'm sure 90% of the people in this room are techies, and you can't understand why the Microsofts, the Amazon, all these companies that deal with computer system couldn't give adequate advice. So I am very, very angry that the rollout was so ineffective and has so many problems. And my word to the President and the Secretary of Health and Human Service, you better get it right. They promised by the end of November. From what I understand, it'll te take longer. So the advice to all of you is never overpromise. Be sure you get assistance in projects where you don't know all the answers and you have to achieve certain goals because the rollout was an embarrassment to the president, to all of us. And I hope it will be fixed because it was created to provide affordable care. Remember that if your family has insurance, and a couple of young people don't think they need insurance because they're strong and healthy. But if they break a leg or, God forbid, are in a car accident and they go to an emergency room, guess what happens? You and I, all those who have insurance, have to pay for it, which is wrong. That was the reason for the Affordable Care Act. And if you go to the hospital emergency <coughs> room for under 16 grand, I think that's probably the lowest number you can get out of there. <laughs> right. And that's for something minor, so let's exactly. make sure we're covered. Uh, let's continue on with our questions from the students here in the Participation in Government class, and you're up. Hi, my name is Michael Earl. The new Tavensee Bridge is an important project on our community. What was your role in the implementation of the new Tavensee Bridge? 
Thank you for that good question, because I've been working closely with Governor Cuomo and all the elected officials, and most important, the Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Fox, who provides the low interest loans for New York State so we can build the Tappan Zee Bridge. Part of my district is now in Rockland County as a result of redistricting, which happens every 10 years. So I go back and forth over the Tappan Zee Bridge all the time, and I look to make sure there isn't a hole someplace, because uh, I don't want to go down there. There are a lot of problems with the current Tappan Zee Bridge, and we're constantly repairing them. Now, I don't want to worry you, because we fix uh, these areas as soon as something is detected. But there was a clear need for building a new bridge. And that's why I was delighted that working with the governor, working with Secretary Fox, we were able to get the low interest loans. And I still am looking for other funds because we want to keep those tolls as low as possible. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, that is going to be an issue because uh, the, the bridges billions of dollars. So the thruway authorities got to come up with a number at some point. But we got the largest low interest loans, and I'm very proud of that. I wish it was a grant, but uh, it's a loan. Right. But the interest rate is low enough that it can be managed, and we're going to continue to work to keep those tolls low. Yeah. Um, and I, the other thing, too, is let's be real clear. I mean, a, a grant is they send you a check, and it's signed, and you cash it. A loan, we got to pay it back to Washington. So that's why the, the tolls. But you want to make sure the yeah. interest is low. Right. We don't want to pay a lot of interest on that bridge. Right. And it's going to be here for a long time. I hope so. They better <laughs> do a good job. Can't wait for the big cranes to get going. Let's get to our next question, and you're up. Hi, I'm Catherine Abbott, and my question for you is, why do you feel so strongly about the necessity for federal support for national research and STEM education? Oh, I love that question. How many of you do well in science? How many do well in math? Well, science, math, engineering, technology, those are the four areas that are so essential to our economy. And there are so many jobs available in those areas. And I'm pleased to particularly to see so many of the girls' hands go up because for the longest time, and I've been part of those studies, girls were turned off at math and science at the age of 12 and 13. So I am a strong supporter of STEM education because we need it to make the United States a prosperous country, and that's where the jobs are. When I speak to heads of various corporations, they'll tell me, Make sure you talk to students about STEM, science, technology, education, and math, engineering and math. Well, mm -hmm. we all need the education. E for engineering and education. So it's essential, and I thank you for asking that question, yeah. and I hope many of you continue in that area. Hold on, just let me, a follow-up for you. Uh, are you looking at going to college in a science or technology arena, or <laughs> haven't you decided yet? Yeah, actually, I'm looking into um, most colleges for pre-med. Wow. Okay, there's science. <laughs> That's great. Excellent. That's Terrific. Great. Thanks so much. All right, let's Thank get to our you. next question. You're up. Hi, my name is Anya Pamalas. My question to you is, what role have you had in immigration reform legislation? Oh, I oh, like boy. that question. Again, it shows the partisanship in the House of Representatives. Immigration reform is essential. And the Senate passed a real comprehensive, good bill. And the House won't even bring it up. Speaker Boehner says, I don't have to bring it up. We must pass immigration reform. We must help people get on a fair path towards citizenship. And I would hope that the people of the United States of America, especially those who will benefit from immigration reform, will send a strong message to Speaker Boehner and say, do it, do it now, and do it in this session. We must do it because it's good for our economy as well. Besides 
really important for families. It's very important for our economy as well, for jobs. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I want to follow up here uh, just as we go forward. The politics of the immigration debate. I mean, we saw in the last election cycle uh, when the president ran for election and you and a third of the Senate and all the Congress, uh, we saw uh, Hispanic voters, African-American voters, women voters really went Democrat, on the, particularly on the immigration issue. Uh, I'm always curious why we're not moving forward on immigration. It would seem like a no-brainer politically for each political party to fix something, wouldn't it? It certainly would, and that's what we should do, and they passed it in the Senate. But unfortunately, there are too many people from the Tea Party wing of the Republican Party okay. that don't like immigration reform. There's and no excuse as far as I'm concerned. We've got to do it. We've got to provide a path towards citizenship. No one's talking about just handing uh, citizenship papers. We're talking about strengthening Border Patrol. We're talking about providing a path towards citizenship. And there are a lot of people in our country who contribute to the economy, who are hardworking, who are raising families, and I think it's essential. And also, let's face it, here at Ossing High School, I'm sure there are dreamers here in the school, right? For sure. I mean, there are folks that uh, their parents came here, they were born here, and that's why we always talk about the DREAM Act and, and right. taking care of some of those issues. Terrific. Let's keep rolling forward. Our next question. Hello, my name is Paul Kleiman, and I'm happy to be here before you, Mrs. Congresswoman. Hi, and Paul. so I'm a big Pete Seeger fan. And a I big? Pete Seeger fan. And so oh, I me stood, too. Will you sing a song for us? I'm, I'm not much of a singer, but I, you know, I really stood for the movement and what he supported. And so I'm really wondering, do you support, and really if you support, what is your role in the desalinization of the Hudson River? That's a good question. Um, I don't know what Pete Seeger's position is on the desalinization, but I have a feeling he'd probably be opposed. But I don't know. And I love the Hudson River. We are so lucky in my district because we have the Hudson River on one side and the Long Island Sound on the other side. There are many questions about the desalinization plant. And I am urging further study, further testimony, so that there can be a consensus on whether it's necessary. Some say you don't need it. Some say you shouldn't be taking the water from the Hudson River. Others are saying that we need that water. So I am aggressively pushing the governor and those responsible for making that decision to give us all the update information that is essential. Thank you. Good Terrific. question. Good question. And here we are on the Hudson River at Austin High School with Congresswoman Anita Lowy. And we're going to keep right on going here. Congresswoman, uh, you, you've referred to this earlier in the program. Uh, government and industry, you mentioned that when you meet with business leaders and captains of industry, uh, they're looking for some direction where we know where the government's going. I, we keep hearing from employers and big companies, well, if we knew where this was going, we could plan ahead. Uh, are you still hearing that from them? Oh, I sure am. But I'm very excited about what's happening in the whole Hudson Valley. Take a company like Regeneron, for example. They started with four people. Right. They're now up to several thousand people. And you know what? They were just voted the number one company in the world that's doing scientific research for the way they treat their employees. And they've made, they tell me, hundreds of millionaires because when you go to Regeneron, you get stock. And that's investment in the company. So the salaries sometimes can start lower. But as you work up and prove your worth, you do pretty well there. And there are many companies. There's a quarter, many companies that have found a great home in the Hudson Valley with employees, science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, it's important for our economy to help them grow they have an important workforce here, 
and we are attracting more and more companies that are doing this research. And it, it's a great success story here in the Hudson Valley for sure. You know, which, which brings me to my next question, which is this, uh, across the country and certainly across New York, great concerns about the middle class. Uh, you've got two or three paychecks or you've got two or three, four part-time jobs to keep a household rolling. Uh, is the middle class in, going to continue to, to struggle in this uh, foreseeable future? First of all, in Westchester County, I'm not even sure what's middle class anymore. Because if you have a home, and uh, if you're going out to buy a home, you can't even find a home if you're middle class. Again, I'm not sure what middle class is. Because if two parents are working, if you're a teacher or a policeman or a fireman, uh, in other words, an average person, and you have a mortgage on your house, and you have to drive a car to get around, and you're sending your kids to college, and you're going to eat, uh, it's very hard to live here and be part of the middle class. As I mentioned before, I visited food banks in both Rockland and Westchester, and then I visited this huge distribution center uh, for the food banks, which is now in Elmsford. And I was shocked to know the thousands of people who are going hungry. If we're not for the food bank, yep. uh, they couldn't survive. So it's very hard to know what the middle class is. We have to work hard to keep the taxes down, to keep property taxes down. But we all have to support our services, whether it's police, firefighters, sanitation workers. School. Because <laughs> I'll meet some people and they'll say, lower my taxes. And I'll say, well, you want to go around with a tin cut and collect money to pay your police or firemen, your yeah. teachers, et cetera. Yeah. So it's hard it's today. Tough. And you don't know quite what middle class is anymore here. Let's do this. We've got about two minutes to go. And I did want to, we had some give and take earlier where you were giving some suggestions, how many people you were pushing science and uh, technology, math, and uh, engineering programs, which is important in our economy. What other advice would you have for primarily high school seniors? Uh, they're not that many months from graduation. Any other thoughts for them? Well, I think the important thing is to focus, to work hard, to do the very best you can. And if you're planning to go to college, no matter where you go, if you're going to a junior college, how many are planning to go to junior college first? Like community college? Community college. Two years? Uh-huh. Uh, the community colleges in our area are terrific, like Westchester Community College. And many people go there and could go on to good jobs. And others go there because it's more reasonable. And then they could apply to a four-year college. So whatever you do, for whatever's left of your high school experience, work hard, focus, and you can be whatever you want to be. You're so lucky to live here in the United States of America. But as I mentioned at the beginning, whatever you do, and I hope you have families, I have three children, eight grandchildren, and I hope that whatever you do, you take part of your day or part of your week to help others, to help lift people up. So congratulations and, and, to all of you. And thanks for being here today. Terrific. Congresswoman Lowy, always Thank a delight you. to chat with you, nice everybody from the class. You. Thanks for being here today. Appreciate it. Meet the leaders on Optimum. More great local programming coming up. So uh, we're going to finish up here at Austin High School. And you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Terrific. You can't text and pay attention to the world around you, and you definitely can't text and drive. Every year, deaths due to distracted and negligent driving are increasing. In fact, while drunk driving rates have dropped greatly, negligent driving fatalities have skyrocketed. Find out more at negligentdriving.com. Tools sure make our lives easy. But a tool is only as useful as the hand that holds it. When it comes to straightening crooked teeth and misaligned jaws, orthodontists have all the right tools in their toolbox. 
They're the most skilled professionals to oversee your care. Orthodontists have the expertise that comes with two to three years of specialized education beyond dental school. They know best which instruments to use when correcting orthodontic problems. Put your smile in the right hands. Visit braces.org.